Good evening. Let's get started. Today we're learning Maseches Gitten Daf Lamed Dalad, and we're starting about six lines down at the words Gidul Bar Reiloi. Uh, a little bit of a housekeeping note: I will not be in town tomorrow. Um, I believe I'm just going to be recording and posting. If it's anything other than that, I will let you know. And I hope to be able to record and post fairly early on in the day, hopefully before lunchtime. The Gemara says on Lamedal and Amadal, about six lines down, Gidul Bar Eloi, Shadar La Gidul Debisu, that Gidul Bar Eloi had sent to get to his wife. Azal Shlicha, he sent it in the hands of a Shliach. So the, the Shliach went, Ashkeche to have a Yasva Venavla. He saw that when he approached the woman to whom he was supposed to give the get, she was sitting in Venavla. She was, as Rashi says, Oregas. She was weaving, she was sewing, something of the sort. Omarla, hi Gitech, I have your get, here it is. And if you take a look at Rashi, Rashi adds in a critical piece here, which we would not have known off the cuff, six lines down, he held it up and said, here's your get, but he didn't hand it to her. But she wanted one more day with the status of Mrs. Omarla, she said to him, go away for now, and come back again tomorrow. Okay. So the shliach goes back to Gidul, Ozal Legabe, the Omar Le, and he tells him what happened, that the wife had said, can you please come back tomorrow? Pasach v'amar, Baruch HaTovah Oh, I'm so happy that it didn't play out the way that I thought it did. Maybe some decision-making was to change it. Maybe he didn't want to get divorced. And in this particular case, where a quarter of the way down on Lamedal and Amad Aleph, apparently this case was subject to a machlokas, a bahi what was the machlokas about? Abay Amar, yes, he said, but there's nothing wrong with the get. The fact that he was revealing his feelings that he didn't want to get divorced doesn't invalidate the document. The document is fine. That's what Abay said. Rav Amar, Baruch Gita. So this is already, we're going to get into the sugya now, and this is going to cover the next Amud. The Gemara says, What are Abaye and Rava arguing about? And the Gemara says, It's really, uh, maybe not even so deep, but it's one that has a lot of implications. The Gemara says, When somebody reveals their feelings, their thoughts about a get, what are the implications in regards to the quality of that get? The fact that in one way or another, you've shown your feelings about the get, doesn't change the quality of the get. Until you do something about it, it doesn't really matter. This is the Machlokes Havai and Rava, all revealed from this case where the husband said, Baruch HaTov and then we were done. Do we say that when he said, Baruch HaTov that therefore the get is meaningless, or therefore the get is still meaningful? And that's the Machlokes Havai and Rava. And the Gemara says a third of the way down, let's dig in and try and figure out why each person holds the way that they do. Amar Rava, Mino Aminala, where do I get my shita from, says Rava, that it matters, that when you say Baruch HaTov you're revealing the fact that you didn't want to be divorced, and therefore, he makes the therefore jump, and therefore, the get is now Batel. Where do we get this from? Derev Sheshes, Ashkele Gita, Lahu Gavra Bal He was pushing this guy to get divorced. The Omar Lahu, the husband, says to them, Lasadi to the Edim, Hachi Omar Lahu Rav Sheshes, Levat El Gita. He says in the name of Rav Sheshes that really, no, I know Rav Sheshes was pushing the husband. The husband then says to the Edim, and not in front of Rav Sheshes, says, oh, Rav Sheshes says the get is Bata Levat El Gita. And then, Ve'atrachei Rav Sheshes, Gita Achrina. So what do we see from here? That when we see that there's a problem with the get, he says, I don't really want to get divorced. Seemingly, that's what happened over here. Rav Sheshes requires another get. The Haraya, the Gilui Daita, leads to Bittol Haget. And the Abaye, what would he say back to this Mari Makom? No. Atu Rav Sheshes Mavatal Gita the Inshehava. Was it Rav Sheshes who spoke to the Edim, who said that he wanted the get to be Mavotel? No, it wasn't at all. Ihu it was the husband. And really, the fact that he said it in the name of Rav Sheshes is because Rav Sheshes was really bearing down on the husband. This marriage needs to end. You can't be in this marriage anymore. So he was afraid, the husband was afraid that if he would have said, I don't want to get divorced. He's afraid. Mishum de panui. What is Mishum de panui? Look at Rashi, almost halfway down on the page. Dibur Hamaschem Mishum de panui. Bnei Adam Hamakin the Chovtin Oso 
the mitzvahs Rav Sheshes, the Omrim Lo, Lama Atam Evadlo. So what happened was that Rav Sheshes didn't want this guy to not get divorced. He's a horrible husband, whatever the case may be. So this guy lied and said it was in the name of Rav Sheshes, but really it was just the husband talking. But that's not that's not really the way that the story should have played out, and therefore you can't really use this story as a raya. So let's look at the other side of the coin. Amar Abaye, Mino Aminola. According to Abaye, who says that Gilui Das is meaningless, and really the get is still perfectly fine, where does he get his shita from? Says the Gemara to Rav Yehuda, Ashkele Gita, Lechasne de Rav Yirmiya Bira. There was a get that Rav Yehuda was involved with, with the son in law, Rav Yirmiya Bira, Uvatle, and he was Mevatle. The Gemara then says, Tana Ashkele. And then let's take a look at Rashi to help us understand what Tana Ashkele means. Halfway down, Rashi says, Tana Ashkele, Shana Shenis. He tried to repeat this process again, and he pushed him to write another get, and he canceled it again. He pushed him yet again to write another get. And he says to the Edim, Place some pumpkin, some gourd into your ears. Our modern parlance would be those little cushy things, you know, like when you go to the shooting range. I don't know if you go to the shooting range. I go to the shooting range. They give you these little, they're fantastic. So the Gemara says that that's what he told them to do. Put something in your ears, in your ears, and just write the get. If really you want to say that Gilui does, that revealing what you feel actually matters. Remember, this is a Baye who says that it doesn't matter. So then, they see that the husband's running around like a chicken without a head trying to get him to stop stop riding the get. So therefore, we see it must be that even though we can see him, but because we have our hearing blocked with the uh, curry, with the gourd that's in ours, we can't hear him. It must be that seeing him is not really relevant. So the fact that there's a gidui das that I can look and assume his feelings doesn't matter. The Rava, what would you say back to this argument? Rava says that's ridiculous. He's saying, please speed up, make me happy, and get me the heck out of this marriage. Maybe he's saying the other way. After all, this will make all of my all of his pain go away. The reason why it wasn't considered a gilui milsa when the guy was running around was because maybe he didn't want to get don't want to ruin the divorce. Maybe he was hastening the divorce. So therefore, again, no raya. So let's try again. We're two-thirds, three-fourths of the way down. Abai wants to give yet another reason because we rejected his uh, argument based on Rava. And the Gemara says 12 lines from the bottom, according to Abai, how do we know that when a person is Megala Daito, that really the get is still kosher? Because... A man says to his wife, if I'm not back within 30 days, then I'm hereby divorced. This case we've seen at least three, four, five times in Shash. We've seen this many times. So he does come back, but the bridge is closed and he's standing across the, across the threshold of the city on the other side, on the outside. And then, what happened in this case? He was Megaladaito. Did it matter? Not one drop. So this is a beautiful raya that, Abri- that Abaye brings to show you that Gilui Das just doesn't matter. It has to be something more. It has to be something tra- transactional. So this is a beautiful raya for Abaye. And Omar Shmuel, in that case, what did Shmuel say? It's nice that you're sharing your feelings. Nobody cares. Shmuel said, Lo uh, Shmei Matya. You're not in the city's limits and your divorce is being affected. The Rava sounds like a slam dunk raya. What would Rava say back to Abaye about this? The Rava, he says, Atu hasam gita boy. He wasn't talking about being mavatil the get or not being mavatil the get. He wasn't talking about the get. He was talking about the tnai. Hasam lekiyume tenoeha kaboy. V'haloakayim tenoeha. He wasn't, you can't really argue that the husband wasn't saying, I want the get to be valid or not be valid directly. He was one step removed, which is dealing with the tenoim shabo that he had put into place. It's not direct enough. And Rava says, not a good argument. A couple of quick stories, and then we'll see who we paskin like. Let's review the machlokas. We have a machlokas abaye in Rava. Is gilui daito in regards to a get sufficient in regards to being mavata to get yes or no? Abaye says sharing your feelings doesn't matter. We brought the beautiful raya from the case where the person stuck outside of city limits. We don't care what you feel. 
your divorce is going to happen. The fact that you shared your feelings doesn't make a difference at all. You're still going to be divorced. Masha Enkain, Rabba was of the opinion that Gilui Daito is Mavatel to get. So let's learn a couple of stories. Last short line on Lamadal, Ramadalev, the Gemara says, And we have a couple who's halachically engaged. They've been through Erusin, but not through Nasuin. So then a man says, if I, if I don't complete the marriage within 30 days, then Lahavagita, here's a conditional star that will divorce you on day 31. If I don't end up marrying you by then, then we're divorced. Kimatus Hosin Yomim got to day 30. Amar Lahu Hotarachna. I've been working the whole time. I haven't made enough money. I haven't finished the logistics. I haven't been able to get a musician. Whatever the logistics are that he wasn't able to get married, how do we view this? How do we look at this particular case? Again, the case is that he did make a get, and the get was conditional to say, if we're not fully married within 30 days, then we're divorced. If we're looking through the lens of maybe the husband was subject to an ones, Somebody stole all of his money in a scam, whatever. So that doesn't work because a known is begin. That, that's too bad. If you made a get, we don't allow an ones to interrupt the natural process of a get. The natural process of the get that you wrote was we'll be divorced within 30 days. Well, if we're not married within 30 days, we'll be divorced on day 31. And then an ones happened. That, that's just a known is begin. We don't, too bad, too bad. So that can't be. And imi shum, if you want to say we should be looking through the lens of gilui daita begita, about the machlokas we've been having above, about whether gilui das matters. And here, when he says hotarachna, he's saying, I don't want to get divorced. Well, there, we can't answer that without first answering who we hold like. And it must be plugged to by Viravo, just like we saw above on the page. If you're asking us to look through the lens of gilui das, we don't yet know who we paskin like, which means we don't know how to answer this case. And similarly, Four lines from the bottom. Ahuda Amar Lahu. A man says to a group of people, and he makes a condition also for a get. If we don't get married by Rosh Chodesh Adar, then we're going to be divorced. And Gimel Adar, we're divorced if we're not married by then. So says the Gemara, Kimata Rosh Chodesh Adar. Guess what? It's Rosh Chodesh Adar. And sure enough, Amar Lahu, oops. Ana the Reish Yarcha did Nisan Amre. I didn't. I'm, I thought the whole time. I thought the whole time it was the month of Nisan. And how do the months go? It's Tishrei Cheshvan Kisei Teveshvat Adar Nisan. He thought he had another month. It's a good question too. That would have been a very reasonable thing. We didn't even go that route. No, I meant Adar Sheni. Also, it depends when. In... <laughs> Also, when did the Eber Yar start? How did that, uh, I don't know how that works. This is the, I mean, the get has a date on it, right? So the guy. The get has a date of today, and it's conditional for 30 days from now. So or, the date. Well, in this case, he was quite specific. He gave the date on, let's say, the first of Tishrei. That's Rosh Hashanah. Gimel Tishrei gives the date. He gives the, the get. And there's, let's say it says on Gimel Tishrei, she received the get. But it doesn't matter because the condition was, he said that if we're not fully married by, um, by Rosh Chodesh Adar, so then we're divorced. But he made a mistake. He didn't mean Rosh Chodesh Adar. He meant Rosh Chodesh Nisan. So the condition of the get is what we're waiting for. Even if the get's given on Gimel, on Gimel Tishrei. But the date when it's valid, which would be Rosh Chodesh Adar, is not written on the get. I don't, I don't think that's how it works. I think the condition is, is somewhat external, which but is it, what makes all this so complicated. But it's not written in the get? Hmm. Why not? Here, we want to know about his Gidoi Das. The, the condition? But even if it's written in the get. Yeah, so fact, what? Even so if it's written in the get, it doesn't matter. If I don't come back within 30 days, you know, that sort of thing. I think it's, I yeah, think first it's of all, it says the uh, Omar Luhu that he said this out loud. But I'm saying, I'm asking another, you're right. I'm asking another question is that if our question is about Gidoi Das, about his feelings, then even if it's written in the get, if he says, I didn't mean Adar, I meant Nisan, if Gilui Das is not a thing, then who cares if it's written or not? But you're right. The Gemara is not is saying what you're saying. But in my head, I, I didn't notice that till you said it. I don't know. Okay. So I, I don't know what the actual case is. So this is the, what's happening over here. And then he says, Oh my gosh, I didn't mean Adar. I, I meant another month. Oi, what should I do? The Gemara goes to the same. Chakira, the my nechushla. How do we analyze this case? Imishum ones and ones begin. You're a fool. You should have looked at the calendar. This is a big deal. You don't just like arbitrarily write. 
How about um, Adar? Adar sounds good. Hey, this is a divorce. This should be serious. It should be taken seriously. And you're not, you're not on your game here. So if you made a stupid mistake because you weren't looking at the calendar, too bad. Ain't onus begin, and you're divorced. So if you look through the lens of ones, you'll be divorced. What if we look through the lens, Yimishum Gilui Daita? Then again, we're back to where we stood before. His das is to say, I wish I wasn't divorced in Adar. I wanted another month. What he actually said was Adar. So how do we look at the Gilui Das? This is, as the Gemara says, Plukta da Baivarova. So now, in order to answer these two cases, we need to figure out if we paskin like Abai or if we paskin like Rava. And says the Gemara, a triple line. The Hilchasa Kenachmen, the Hilchasa Kenachmen, the Hilchasa Kenachmeni. But let's go back to Lamadal and Amadalef and read the Rashis that correlate to this rather cryptic line. Hilchasa Kenachman, three lines from the bottom, to Amar Lael Bittel Bifnei Shnayim, which is fascinating, that we hold like the Shita, that if a husband is Mavatal again in front of two people, again, pre Takanas Rabban, Rabban Gamaliel uh, Zakein, who doesn't allow for this, but had it been in the pre Rabban Gamaliel Zakein era, that he could have gone over to, to two people and been Mavatal again. The next Rashi, two lines from the bottom, Hilchasa Kenachman Nami, Behada Amar, Halacha Kirebi Bishtein. This was the Gemara we ended with yesterday, the double Sugya of Rebbe and Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. And then Rashi on the top of Lamed Dalad, and Mabez, Hilchasa Kenachmeni, Nachmeni, as we know, is Abaye, the Amar Gilui Daita Begita, Lav Milsahi, Vizohi Achas Mehilchos, Shel Simen Yaal Kegam. It's the, it's the gimel. It's that gita, it doesn't, the case of get, gilui daita doesn't matter one drop. It's not what you say, it's what you do. You have to be very specific, be very clear, something has to actually happen. But if they see you running and you think your gilui das doesn't matter. And that's fascinating. This is very rare, six times in shas. Yehu Shalomi Das is the Yud, the Gimel. I don't know the other ones. And the Gimel is, is yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I saw this is regular Yudios, Clelios, and Shas. I don't know that. Yeah. Okay. Let's say people have some nicknames. You have some people like Abaye. It's a great example. I love that they went from Abaye calling him Nachmeni into this Mishnah. Because this Mishnah says, Berishona, Hayemishana, Shemo, Ushma, Shemi, Roba, Shemi, Ra. Originally, when when the Gittin were written, they were written so that it would include his name and her name and their respective cities. Hiskin Rav Gamliel Azokein, same person we were discussing a couple of days ago. Sheikosev Ish Ploni Bechol Shum Sheyeshlo, and any other name that he may have, because some people are called by different things. You know, we got uh, just using as a wonderful example. Tzvi Sheir is also referred to as Harry, which is. Pretty rough for a young guy to go through. So he's got both names. So Rahman al He's got your boy here. I'm making fun of him, I know. But no. <laughs> Where is Bobby when you need her? This is when Dafyomi needs to be on Zoom from home. Oh, that was fantastic, Mr. Shayer. I'm calling your wife right after Dafyomi. I'm telling you, yeah. This is at the men's club. I have your back. Don't worry. I have your back. Beautiful. So the Gemara says, what if a person has two names? So then you should make a condition. The Chol Shum Sheyesha Rabban Gamliel Azokin added, you can't, I just got caught by the credit cards. I have two different credit cards. One says Philip, one says Phil. They wouldn't even put it on the same account. Hamechune Phil. So I called them as Shter. They had, they finally, so when people have multiple names, this was Rabban Gamliel Azokin. And Isha Ploni says, well, the Chol Shum Sheyesha Mibnei Tikkun Olam. Because of Tikkun Olam, we don't want people to get stuck in marriages because of super technical things like this. Just, Make sure that we're broad and in the names. The Gemara opens, Lamadal and Amadbeis, five lines down. Amar of Yehuda Mar Shmuel, Shalchule Bnei Medina Sayam, people from Chutzla are sent a letter to Rabban Gamliel. Bnei Adam Haboim Misham Lekan, people are coming from Eretz Yisrael to Babel. Shmo Yosef Bekorn Lo Yochanan. Guy's got two names. Okay, I went to high school with someone like that. His, his uh, English name was Aaron, and his Hebrew name was Chaim. Like Aaron and Aaron, you didn't you didn't catch the hint. Today I did a bris, Noah, Noah, very good. Congratulations, you saw the writing on the wall. So here, this guy is Yosef, and they nicknamed him Yochanan. So Yochanan, the Koran lo Yosef, or the other way. Heach megarshin nishoseim. How should they perform the divorce? So that's what the Gemara wants to find out. The Gemara says, Omad Reb Gamliel v'hiskin she'yuhu kosvin ish ploni v'chol shum she'yeshlo. This was one of the stories where we see from Rabban Gamliel and it was quoted by 
uh, Rabbi Huda Mar Shmuel. Rabbi Huda was one of the rare Amoraim who learned both under Rav and under Shmuel, as we've seen probably 30, 40 times in Shas. And he learned in Shir from Rabbi Yehuda that the, the appropriate Mari Makum to solve this problem is that of Rabban Gamliel, where he was his skin, she yukosvin ish ploni v'chol shum, she yesh lo ish ploni v'chol shum, she yesh lo mibnei tikkun olam. Very good. However, it's not true of every get. Not every get has to have this condition. When does this rule apply? When does the takana of Rabban Gamliel Azakin apply that you need to have your name, Phil, and all other names that he goes by. When does it apply? That's only true if people know that you have two names. I don't get called by two names. Most people don't get called by two names. So if you don't get called by two names, then don't worry about it. This rule doesn't apply to you. The takana of Rabban Gamliel Azakin doesn't apply across the boards. It's only for the people who are Yosef Yochanan. Yochanan and then Yosef. It says the Gemara, Amar le Rabbi Abba the Ravashi. Rabbi Mari the Rabbi Lazar, Kaime Kavasach. So Rabbi Abba says, Ravashi, these other people hold like you. And Tanya Kavase the Ravashi, a third of the way down, will be going to the two dots on the very top line of Lamed Hey Amad Aleph. Says the Gemara as follows. We have a Brisa supporting Ravashi that it only applies. When do we have the rule of Rabban Gamliel as Zakein? It's only true when a person is known to have two names. Nashim. <laughs> So if I had to make an implication from the Gemara, those are seemingly the same names. Because the Gemara's cases were Yosef and Yochanan, like very severely different names. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's how this works. I, I don't think so. Um, we, we have the same thing in our legal system also. Like if you go to TSA PreCheck and your driver's license says Phil, they may screen you, but they'll still put you through because like they know it's the same. Okay, you you didn't write your whole name, you know, whatever. So I, it, again, I'm implying, I don't see the Rishonim here, but because the Gemara's examples are Yochanan and Yosef, Lechora, that's, otherwise it would have been Yosef and Yossi would have been uh, whatever. What does the Bryce say to support Ravashi? That the rule of uh, Rabban Gamliel Azokin only applies when a person is known to have two names. The Gemara says, A man has two wives. One of them lives in Yehuda. One of them lives in the Galil, in the center of Eretz Yisrael. One of them lives in the north. This is like one of those stories. This is not a good story. But this guy has like a secret life. His name is John, and he lives in the north with his wife, Betsy. And when he goes back to the center of the country, his name is Jack, and he lives with his wife, uh, Mary. That's what the Gemara paints the case. And the wife in Yehuda, he divorced with his appropriate Yehuda name. It was aligned, all good. And what's the din? Because of the Takan of Rabban Gamliel Azakin. It has to be both names. Both names. He goes by two names. Rabban Gamliel says that if you are known by two names, it doesn't matter where, if you're known by two names, this rule applies to you. It doesn't matter. It's okay, so you're living a double life. That's your problem. That's a problem. But Rabban Gamliel like, wasn't hearing of it. If you're Jack over there and John over here, that's too bad. You're getting, don't work, Pasha. You're still married. Jack and John. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. See, this is the Maury Povich show. Yeah. Man, nail. Seriously. Then the Gemara says, Yatsa le makom acher ve goresh be echad man megurashas. Fascinating twist. If you're no longer in either of those places and you get divorced with one of those names, you're megurashas. Says the Gemara, why, why does this work? The ha'amr is shame to galil imo. Why does this work? So it says the Gemara, it only applies if in those places you have two names. Rabbi Gamliel put a limit to his rule. When you're in Yehuda and Galil, in those places, people seemingly knew that he had two names. But if you go to uh, the Negev, you're fine. It's an odd limit, but that's what the Gemara seems to say is the limit for Rabban Gamliel. And the Gemara tells the story, Hahi, we're two, two thirds of the way down, a little bit more, right before the Mishnah, La Medal, and Rabbi Zahid, Havu Karula Miriam. Most of the time, people called her Miriam. Uporta Sarah, a small percentage of people would call her Sarah. 
or the opposite. Amri Naharda, Miriam, uh, sorry, Amri Naharda, what did they say in Naharda? Miriam, the Chol Shum Sheyeshla. So, what is the primary name that's in this get? It's Miriam because 90% of the time she was called Miriam. I'll even say 51% of the time she was called Miriam. And only sometimes she was called Sarah. Below, you should not say Sarah, the Chol Shum Sheyeshla. The name that we want, want to use as the identifying name is the primary name, 51%. And that's what the Gemara says. So we do have a takana from Rabban Gamliel Hazakein that if a per person is known to have two names and only when he has a chazaka for such a thing would he then have the requirement to say v'chol shum shi'eshla. The new Mishnah opens seven lines or so, eight lines from the bottom of the page on la medal and mebeis. Ein almana nifras minichse yisom imel b'shvua. An almana is only allowed to collect from the properties of yisom with a shvua. Nimne umi lahashbiya, take a look at Rashi, two thirds of the way down. Nimne umi lahashbiya, Vahisam Afsed is Ksuvasa. She was, if she's hesitant to make a Shvua, that's a big problem. Then, because she was hesitant to make the Shvua, Hiskin Rabban Gamliel Azakein, third Mishnah in a row about him. What did he say? Shetei no deres, they summum komashi yirtu vegovak subasa. They could make any uh, any external promise that she should make. That if it, Rashi get, Rashi speaks this out, Dibur Hamaskel shetei no deres, they summum komashi yirtu yivchur lehem davar kasha lehadira vo kigon kona mini mezona salai im nehenesi miksuvasi. Something, some type of stark external type of promise, but she doesn't have to make a direct shvur. The Gemara says, olam. This we saw earlier in the Masechta, that uh, the reason why we have Edim signing on a get is because of Tikkun Olam. And lastly, the Hillel Hiskin Prusbol Mibne Tikkun Olam here too, as we've learned about many, many, many times, the Prusbol was meant to enable lenders to still lend. They were afraid they wouldn't get their money back at the end of the year, at the end of the Shemitah cycle, and therefore we wanted to continue that. The Gemara opens, my area almana. What do you mean that she's the only one who has to make a shvua? Why does the Mishnah highlight an almana? It's true of anyone. If you're taking stuff from your son, you have to make a shvua. So the Gemara gives a beautiful and important He'ara. Last line of Lama Dalad Amabez, last line for us as well. Almana Isrichale, we needed to highlight that case. Salka Daita Chamina Mishum China Akilu Rabbonon Gaba. That because we want there to be Chain by her, so therefore we're going to be a little bit more Mekil. Kamash Mulan, that we're not. Take a look at Rashi, top of the page. Mishum China Sheyehe Chain Ho Anashim Be'ena Hanashim Linase Lehem. And that she shouldn't have to make such a Shvua. Pasnisht. The Gemara says, Kamash Mulan, that even in Almana, that's the Chiddush of the Mishnah. Yes, everybody has to make a shvur when they're taking from Yusuman. But even in Almana, when we should be worried about her chain, by her as well, she has to make a shvur. We'll stop right here. We'll pick up tomorrow with a recording. No learning in person tomorrow night. Wishing you all a beautiful night. You want to do my right? I'm